I am the Eggman. I am the walrus. Cuckoo, 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 choo. Hey, Captain Dave Man with the Ranch Balloon video. My poor wife. My poor wife. Look how many eggs she cleans every day. That's a five gallon bucket full and a half of another. She's been complaining that her uh, wrists hurt. And me being a doctor like I am, I'm going to say it's carpal tunnel. So this action, clean eggs, clean eggs. So what Captain Dave Man did was made his wife an egg cleaning machine. Da, da, da. A Captain Dave Man original. Clean my eggs, clean. No more. Scrubbing with her with her hands. All them eggs and dirt and poop and Dirty poops, right? I mean, dirty eggs. eggs look like that. Show me what a clean egg looks like, babe. Ta da! Ta da! Nice and clean and sparkling. Now I've seen other egg uh, cleaners on the internet. So I went online to look, see what there was. And there wasn't any. They had these uh, eggs in a basket and they were bubbling them with bubbles. And I don't know. I. It's just air bubbles. I don't know if it's going to work. But this actually has scrubbers and stuff on it, so uh, gets them nice and clean. You know, no matter how much, just put them in the bucket, let them soak a few minutes, put them in there, let them go. So uh, I'm going to share my plans. I'm going to tell you how to make one. So uh, let's get to making an egg cleaner. <clears throat> All right, let's make an egg washer. So what you're going to start out with is just your everyday old uh, paint roller. I recommend getting new ones. I just got this one for uh, to show you. So what you want to do is you're going to remove all this handle. So if you take a hacksaw or a grinder, whatever your saws all, cut this metal bar right behind these little nubs. This will come off. And then this inner bar in here, if you push really hard, it will pop out the end here. I know it looks like it's solid, but it's not. It'll pop out. And what you will end up with is just this little cage here with these plastic pieces on the end. You're going to need three of those. And then what you want, I'm not going to tear this one apart because I've already made a prototype and now I'm making the real deal. So I'm not going to tear this apart. But uh, what you want to get is some 5 sixteenths all thread stock. Now if you go to Lowe's, they sell it in this length already pre-cut very convenient so you'll drill the ends out to accommodate your 5 16 rod it might fit in there depending on what brand of uh, roller you use take your 5 16 rod and as you can see I ran nuts this is a lock nut on this end I ran nuts all the way up to the plastic run a nut all the way to plastic this one I used a backup nut because it wasn't a uh, this is a um, you know the ones that don't back off can't think of the name right now but anyhow use a backup nut and then on the ends I used the um, lock nut on here and ran it all the way down here with a couple of washers on the back same with here I left this one facing forward now on this one like I said there's gonna be three of them on this one you want to leave it out a little farther than this end because this is going to be your drive this is what's going to drive your uh, your egg washer. We'll get to that a little bit later. So, and what I did for the bottom one, I kind of got this texture one. It's kind of hard and scratchy. Kind of a little, it's soft, but it's kind of hard and scratchy. So that's going to be on my, uh, the bottom roller for my egg rollers. And then on the other two, when you put the nut, when you put the all thread through, kind of leave um, the same amount of, um, thread on both sides. That's not supposed to be on there. That was just a backup that I was using. Hang on. I don't want to get confused. So anyhow. So what they're going to do is they're going to kind of set like this 
in your egg washer. And what you want to do is before you put the all thread through here, before you do this, take your three your three rollers and, and figure out, you know, your because your egg goes ahead in here and this and it rolls and all three of these roll. So you want them squished pretty good tight. So you take your this is before you put the all thread, you take them, paint the ends of these, and you can push them down on a piece of paper and make a pattern of where you want the you know the the um, all threads to line up or they're going to go through the walls. Now that I've already, like I said, this is a prototype. This is the pattern I came out with. Now you can do your own pattern or whatever you want, but I don't know if this is going to help you any, but um, these are inch grid, inch squares. Each one of these, you know, square inches. If you want to take a look at that, you can maybe copy a, a pattern from that. If that doesn't show up, I'll, I'll double check. If it doesn't show up good, I'll, uh, well, let me hold it up to the camera a little bit better. Maybe that'll help. Let me get behind the camera. Make sure you can see it. Like I said, each one of those are square inches there. So you can, if you can think about it, you can figure that out pretty easy and make your own pattern, the same pattern I have. Now my new washer I'm going to make, that was old wood, that was like I said, just a prototype. I'm going to use these old street signs. I believe they're aluminum. Um, they're uh, 12 by 18 and I'm designing this to fit into the sink. So what I'll do is I'll transfer my pattern onto this. And you know the, so you know the rollers are gonna fit in there like that. But of course they're gonna be going through. They're gonna fit in there like that. And uh, you're gonna have to decide what you're gonna use to run your, um, you know, to power it. I'm gonna use a drill. So I want to make sure I have enough room from the bottom to where the drill is going to connect to fit in the sink. Because there's not going to be enough room, you know, once you get that length in there to fit the drill down inside. So you want the drill to be up above the sink level. You'll see. I'll, I'll show you more. But, uh, so now what you want to do is figure out where you're going to want your pattern and transfer it and drill it. And what you, when you drill that, you want to make sure that you have... You know, line both sides, you know, because this is going to be your, this is going to be your wall like this, you know, and the rollers are going to sit in here, you know, sit down in there like that, in here. So when you drill that, figure out what you want in your inside, put your insides together, and drill all three, all three rollers into both pieces at the same time. So you get, so it's even, so it ain't cockeyed when you put it together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go drill my holes and I'll be right back. Okay, I got my holes drilled. So you're thinking, man, them are big holes. Now if you want, you can just drill holes big enough for your rod to fit through. But if this is something you're going to use for a while, what's going to happen is this, these holes are going to wallow out and it's not going to be any good. So what I did is I found some of these um, these bearings. They're a 5 16 bearing that fits the shaft. You can go on eBay. They actually make some bearings that are even better. They, uh, they screw down. And it'll be really easy to do if you go to eBay. But I don't have that. Didn't want to wait for them, so... What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take these and I'm going to glue them over here like that. I got one I already did. So you see I glued them on. Now remember this is your inner wall. It's important. Your inner wall, not your outer wall. So this is the inner wall. So the, um, the bearings are going to fit in there like that. So see, these are going to keep. These are just glued for right now. So what I'm going to do now 
is I'm going to put a couple of screws through here and then I'll grind them off on this side. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go uh, finish screwing these things down and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, our next step. We've had we've installed these guys now. Ground the backs off. So now what we want to do because our bearings fit in these little holes is that we want to make uh, washers to retain that bearing. So what I did, I numbered my uh, my holes and I numbered my washers and I drilled four holes in those washers. Now the reason I numbered them because I'm going to drill all my holes and I didn't want to get my washers mixed up because I don't have a uh, I don't have a drill press. But anyhow, they're all drilled differently, so uh, I numbered them. So uh, what I did is I uh, I kind of just took it and I dropped it down over the uh, uh, they were level, they were even with each other. Held it down, drilled my first hole, put a screw in it. Make sure they're all level again. Drilled my second hole, put a screw in it. Now go ahead and drill the other two easily. So now you got that part done. So now you got your washers drilled with matching holes in number one. So you take your bearing, drop it down in there. I put the number at the bottom so I know which way the hole orientation goes. Oh, my wife would kill me if I had a screw in her. And uh, just get started. Oops, you know what I did? That's why you have the numbers facing downwards. Uh, use the screwdriver the rest of the way. So things, so things don't get weird. Just checking it so one side ain't getting stuck down quicker than the other.
There got a little off kilter, but I think we'll do all right. Snag him down. What you do, you'll take him off. You'll grind these off. So, done. This is going to be the outer and side wall. right in the bearing like that and uh, you'll have a washer in here so it uh, snugs down to the inner part of the bearing a washer in there or a couple but anyhow that's the way it's looking so far and I'm gonna go grind those off and I'll be right back with you All right, okay. Um, so we got our uh, we got our bearings in here, and they're all turning nice and free. So what I did is I uh, I cut some pieces of um, this aluminum channel so I can attach my side pieces on, and I did it to both pieces. Um, this is an eight inch, and it's about a uh, it's about a uh, inch and a quarter from the top right where the bend stops same with this this is an eight inch about the bend stops and right here on the front i just laid a uh, straight edge across here and put a four inch piece you know it's like that so right here is a four inch piece i did it on both sides so what we're going to do now is um we're going to take our rollers and on each roller you're going to put you're going to put your washer on and uh place them in the holes of course, on the um, on the drive roller, since I'm using a uh, a drill to power mine, I left the you know that that longer to um, attach to the drill. Now I'm hoping the drill will stand up. If it don't, if the drill don't work. I'll have to uh, incorporate a different kind of motor. So put that in. Put that one in. Now we got I got our washers on these edges now on these uh, ends. And take your next piece, the other side, and um, push it all together. So, uh, take another washer and uh, put there. I'm using these lock nuts.
Now you want to do the same on the other side. So now what we're going to want to do is, um, let me show you here. is take a take your wrench, your seven sixteenths wrench, and hold that lock nut there, and come over here. tighten this lock nut down tight so what that's going to do is going to lock your um, thread your shaft into the inner bearing so the bearing spins instead of just the shaft spinning inside there so that's going to lock that down on that bearing and so, so it's all going to spin so um, I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to turn the film off and I'll be right back okay I told you to hold the bolt here it's what's easier to do is to hold the bolt here and here and tighten them down don't worry about in here so um i got them tightened down now is the time if you can to hook your uh, motor up and make sure nothing's binding and nothing's uh you know not not working properly so i went ahead and hooked mine up and uh it's working fine it'll be more stable once you get the top and the back on it So all right, so now is the time to um, measure your top and your back and your sides. Now, I'm, I guess I'm designing this to fit in the sink, so I'm not really worried about the bottoms here, you know, because it's going to be down in the sink. But I'm worried about putting splash, you know, getting the sides up and stuff so the stuff don't splash out. But uh, so I'm going to go ahead and measure these and put them on, and uh, and then I'll uh, I'll be right back with you. Okay done a few more things since you were here last we just had the sides so what I did is I just um, you know measured and uh, made me a back plate and connected it this doesn't matter because it's gonna be under the sink so and then I made me a top plate and connected it front plate connected it sprayed some paint and uh, then what I did is I drilled some holes at the top here to go through there's matching holes on the other side just right above the rollers and then I um, I soldered this it's just some 3 8 copper so it fits in there like this and it goes through the other side and what I did with I soldered the copper I uh, adapted it down for a quick disconnect kind of like a garden hose and then on the bottom I drilled some very small holes some of them that's shoot in straight down some of them that's going to shoot kind of in towards the middle where the eggs are going to be so I did that yeah and I also I added this half inch bolt it's um, 10 inches and I do, you know, I just ran it through here with the backup bolt and, you know, bolted it down, snugged it down on the other side. And this is going to um, help stabilize my uh, drill a little bit. So I'll put my drill on there. All right. Now I put it on, uh, let me see if I can... Uh, you're seeing that yeah I put it on this side of the drill because you know when the drill torques it's going to be going you know, it's going to be torquing this way so that'll help it from spinning uh, also what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put a zip tie on here
just to help uh, reduce some of the weight on there. So all the rates on the shaft. So some, you know, this is help holding the the drill up. And um, another thing I might want to mention about the drill is that uh, I bought a variable speed drill, so you can um, adjust the speed if you want it faster. You make it go faster. You want it slower. You can make it go slower. So uh, it's uh, pretty much all done. Oh. Couple other things I'll show you. Almost forgot. Um, this is some water hose. I think it's like a three quarters inch, half inch. I'm not sure. I just grabbed it. You can buy it by the foot, or you can buy it in bundles. Um, this is some um, plastic, and it has some nylon running through it. Just some plastic tubing. And what I did is I, uh, I'll show you inside there. You can see I added um, alongside the the rollers. That's kind of like an egg bump, you know, so they ain't bumping against the metal. If they get there, they'll hit the uh, this rubber siding. So I put an egg bump in there, and I also put a you know a tray underneath there. So if an egg falls, you know, don't go into the sink. You can get it out. I'll show you what else I did. So what else I did was uh. My wife sacrificed her sprayer because she says she don't use it hardly ever anyhow. So on the end of that sprayer, I hooked up the quick disconnect. That'll hook right into this, just like a hose. And when she's not using it, I put in a, uh, I don't know if you can see it under here, a, uh, you probably can't see it. But I did. I put an inline valve there so she can turn the water off and on since it no longer has a sprinkler head. So there you have it. A homemade egg washer. If you have any questions, give me a comment and I'll answer. I might even make you a video. Um, subscribe. Hit the little uh, bell notification. Have a good day. Trust no one. Believe nothing. Captain Dave Man signing out. Pan Ranch Blue. Peace.